All right, so this is part two um, of creating a render something similar to this uh, from model to Photoshop and rendering and post processing, post processing and all that. So I'm not going to make this exact building, and some stuff that I do make might not be. Um, even visible in the render but it'll be a good look into some of the things that you can do in Rhino um, and quickly so um, let's go ahead and get started with doing some of the openings uh, like uh, these on on this facade which will be on these facades here these two main facades and then we'll, we'll do the other uh, fenestrations in another video but uh, I'm not going to plan on sticking to windows like this I'm going to take it one step further whether or not it uh, looks like good design or, or something that some, some of you may do uh, is not really the concern of what I'm trying to do um, I'm just trying to make um, something introduce more technical um, strategies for modeling um, instead of just knocking out holes so let's get started with that um, since the last video I've created a ground plane and I put it on a ground plane layer and I lock that layer so that I don't move it around but for right now I'm going to go ahead and turn that off um, it doesn't really matter what layer you're on because we're just going to do something really quick and then we can shuffle what layer um, each thing is on after that. <clears throat> so the first thing we want to do is change our C plane. You can come up here into this little tab and if you don't have a C plane tab you can right click in here and go to show or hide tabs. Make sure you're not in toolbar because that's different um, and go down to C planes, turn that on and this, these facades are the front facades so we're going to want to click on the set C plane world front so now you can see that when we're building, we're going to be building on the same plane as these these facades. <clears throat> I'm going to switch into ghosted for a second. So what you can see is that we have a wall thickness of 8 inches and as, um, ultimately the combined height of the floor of um, this level and the ceiling of this level is 16 inches. Um, but really we just need to be concerned about the 8 inches here and then the 8 inches for the wall thickness. So I'm going to basically be creating these extrusion boxes and I'm going to be making them 3 feet, stick out 3 feet. Um, and then I'm going to turn those into windows. <coughs> some will be 3 feet, some will be um, 2 feet and some will be 1 feet. That way there, there's a variation in extrusion on, on those facades. So, um, I know that the floor to uh, ceiling height is um, 10 feet, and I want the extrusions to have a one foot thickness. So, before I get too confusing, let's just go ahead and, and start. So, this we're, we're working in this instead of on the on the ground the rectangles up here like this because we're in the front C plane um, and that makes everything so much easier when you can get used to switching C planes and knowing which C, keeping track of which C plane you are in all, at all times uh, so anyways we're going to make this 10 feet wide and we're going to make it 10 feet high so that we have these nice um, square openings offset that by um, one foot Make sure that your line is on the inside. If it's on the outside, that won't make much sense because your extru extrusion will be um, protruding out beyond the building for footprint, which may be something that somebody wants. And maybe I'll do that on one or two of these, have it wrap around. Um, but for starters, starters, we'll just do on the inside. Now, I'm going to extrude this, uh, say negative three feet. Um, and we still have the curves here 
go into shaded mode. So we we want to keep this this curve here, this inside one, because that's going to be the curve that we use to cut the window out. So push Control and click on it to deselect it. Hit Delete to uh, remove this outside one that we no longer need. Um, so we can select that curve and we're going to go back to ghosted mode hit extrude and you can come up here and you can do uh, both sides it says no and hit yes and then I'll extrude in both directions from the uh, center of that curve now all we really need for it to do is be 8 inches so we're going to go ahead and just eyeball it and, and call it good so now that we have that, we can go ahead and delete that curve now. So what we're left with is something like this. Um, go ahead and select both of those. Type G, and hit spacebar to group it. So now we have that. And now what we can do is go to the front view. Now I know that the building is 45 feet. Uh, you, this facade is 45 feet wide so what we can do is, is just take this and you have the gumball here and if you push alt while clicking on any of these arrows um, it'll pop up with this and you can enter a number value and that'll be moving it but when you hold alt it actually moves the copy so that you don't have to rebuild any geometry or or do any kind of crazy thing like that. Um, so we're going to copy this one over 20 feet. It's copying again because I held Alt and I'll copy it again 15 feet and so that'll be the first floor uh, facade layout for the openings. Now you can do the same in the up direction. Uh, hold Alt, push up, and know that it's floor to floor is 10 feet. Um, maybe I will, I don't want this one here so I'll just move it without holding alt negative 10 feet that'll put a little little off center staggered copy this one up 10 feet maybe copy it or move it 10 feet so that you start to have a little bit of variation maybe I'll copy this up 20 feet same layout for that copy that one up 20 feet maybe move it backwards 10 feet so there's a little bit more variation um, maybe copy that up 20 feet move that over negative 20 feet Oop, excuse me negative 15 feet nope that's going to be negative 10 feet I guess yep we'll get it sooner or later now it looks a little weird. Maybe I'll move this one over 20 feet. Maybe 10 feet. Uh, 5 feet. Sure, that looks okay. So what we have is a bunch of these. And we can select these all and ungroup them. Really what we want to um, do here is use these whole, these blocks that we made and punch them out of each floor. So you can select a floor and come up to the uh, solid tools. Again if you don't have this right click up in this area somewhere mm -hmm. and come down and then solid tools will be uh, somewhere down here. Right there we want a boolean difference so go ahead and don't have anything selected hit boolean difference it's going to ask you to select a thing that you want to basically uh, have a hole punched into so we'll select this and we'll right click and then we will select these center blocks and right now we have delete input equals yes so when we when we do that it will remove those center blocks as we do it now if we run that command again 
select, yes, select these, but turn delete input off, and then confirm, those will stay there. That's how I usually do it, um, and then you just have to go back and delete them manually. All it does is take more time, um, but that's what I'm used to. Helps me keep track of where my geometry goes a little bit better for whatever reason. Um, you can also pre-select the piece you want to cut out to save yourself an extra step. Boolean difference, then select these. Delete that. Go ahead and delete input. Um, but of course that's not what we wanted to do because we need to mirror this to that side. So we'll go to the top view, select, actually, before we do that, make a line, turn project off, make a line um, from this bottom outside wall to the perpendicular of the other side. And so we're going to use this middle point in here to f copy all of this and flip it to this building um, so that we don't have to rebuild that. Of course, if you want that facade to look differently, then you will build that facade um, on its own. So we type mirror. Um, up here, you want to make sure that copy is yes, and you can either click that, or you can push C and spacebar, or C and enter, or C and right click, doesn't matter. Uh, and then find this midpoint, flip it over. <coughs> of course, I turned it off. Make sure copy's on. And now we have that over here. Um, now you want to put project on. Project basically just means that uh, the reference point will always be on a construction plane. So that if I click on, if I select all of these and I want to move them referencing this back line and I move them up to here on the perp. Um, if I didn't have project on, it may not look that way. So I'll, I'll, I'll turn project off and then I'll move it, doing the same exact thing, selecting that black back line, click on it. Uh, now it, it did work, um, but it does not always. Sometimes it'll think you're clicking on like the back of this one and it'll try and snap to something down here. Um, that's just something that uh, you would need to get used to. Uh, of course I selected this back piece but really what I wanted to select was something over here. So we'll select that, move it to that, and we're still good. So then we want to boolean all of these out. So I'll do that real quick. Now we have all of those window openings. Um, now if you want to have this, some of these um, in more or out more, you can just kind of select them randomly. Of course in the design project you might not be so random about it. Um, but for today we can get random. and we can move them back, let's say two feet. You can select a couple other random ones. Move them back one feet. And we ended up with a facade that's kind of pushing and pulling. Now what that does though is you can see the outline here and it comes down. That basically means that uh, this side of that that box is in the same plane as um, the side of the wall and that can be problematic when you're rendering um, and and what you'd want to do in that case is just um, boolean that out from the wall uh, but you might not always want to have delete input turned on So now you have that extrusion sticking out past the wall, or you can take, um, 
have it just extrude less. But for the purposes of this, we're not going to really worry about that. Uh, what we can do is if we wanted to wrap this around and have it be a little bit more interesting, we can um, rotate this 90 degrees and then kind of merge them together. So if you take this blue, you can rotate it. And if you tap Alt, you see that plus sign that pops up. So that means you're going to rotate it and do a copy. And that one is one of the ones that's only sticking out one feet. And now you want to find your snap. Um, there's a trick here, because we need to punch a hole out here as well, to where you can uh, do dupe edge, D-U-P-E, and then select these edges. Right click to confirm, type J and enter to join those and do a closed and now you can extrude this back in and we, if we want to cut that hole out we can extrude it a little bit or a lot of it it doesn't matter it just needs to be bigger than the 8 inch thick wall and that's what the what good um, doing both sides on extrusion is um, if you are if your curve is in the center of the wall um, but we can go ahead and delete that curve we can select this and we can go back and boolean difference out that wall to this delete it and now what we have is that element here and this element and they're kind of conflicting um, so what I would do is make a rectangle from the top of this to that so that and then extrude it, but we don't want to extrude both ways. So we'll extrude it to the top. I know it's getting tricky here, but bear with me. So we're going to take these two angled parts and we're going to Boolean difference both of those to this shape we just made. And that will create this nice little edge. And there's all these weird funky lines. So what we can do is take those and we can union them together, Boolean union still have those lines and if you type merge all bases it becomes a little bit nicer of a geometry now we still have this weird edge for the the building here um, but that's really just the same as this stuff is and, and it's at this point it's trivial if it becomes a problem you can uh, boolean difference that out of this and then it's cleaned up. But now you have a big hole in the wall, which really doesn't matter because graphically it all looks the same. Um, so I'll do that quickly one more time down here. Hold Alt, rotate, move this, create a rectangle down here and snap the end of that rectangle to there select it extrude it up to the top and you can select this the wall uh, pardon me that needs to be moved out uh, negative three feet to match which means we need to redraw that curve So this wall, go ahead and boolean difference that from that. And now we have that opening, as you can see. And then also boolean difference this, these two. And you have the same thing. And you can boolean difference all three of those at the same time if you want. Um, the, when I did it on this one, I actually made two different pieces of geometry. One that, bool that duplicated the edge, which is one way you can do just to get the same uh, shape again it's just duplicating edge but in this one which was much faster is I just created one big geometry that I knew was going to fit within here and I was going to delete the, the holes that I needed for the wall um, <coughs> uh, all in one smooth motion 
So we can merge all faces on this. And merging all faces just re-simplifies the geometry and it makes it a little bit easier to use um, when doing texture mapping and, and stuff like that. Um, again, we have that wall in there, um, but that, that should be fine. We can merge all faces on that as well. So we have our openings. Uh, that'll conclude this video. On the next video, I will be doing the details in here where you have this um, this floor, you have like this soffit, if you will, um, the louvers, and the the uh, entire window wall here. Um, so stay tuned for that, um, and uh, enjoy, guys. Thanks.